Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Sara's Canvas Studio. Let's get straight into today's video, which is going to be about creating a children's book. You don't need to be an author, I'm not. You don't need to know how to make these because I'm going to be doing that. And you certainly don't need any money to start. Everything we're going to use is going to be free. This is going to be a three-part series. This is part one, where I show you how to create the interior of the book from content generation to drafting and composing. In the other two parts, I'll show you how to create the book cover and then finally how to upload the book to Amazon KDP. So let's get straight into it. The first thing we'll do is open up ChatGPT. For this video, I already have an idea. I read a lot of books to my daughters and one of them was 100 first words and that's exactly what we'll make. They're incredibly easy to make and just don't get old. So here I'm just giving ChatGPT something to work with. I gave the prompt to help me create a book of 100 words for kids and categorize it. ChatGPT helped me create a layout for the content of my book. And as you can see, it also asked me if we would like to visualize the content. I went ahead and also asked it to visualize the content and it gave me a detailed idea on what illustrations I can use. You can also see that it has generated a sample image for me to help inspire me. These days, there's a lot of debate on ethics of generating content with AI. But in this video, I will show you how you can ethically use AI to create some, something original. It will be your hard work and ChatGPT is just going to be our good old friend supporting us. Once we have the idea for our content ready, we're going to choose our trim size. Just typed out Amazon KDP book size and I'm going to click the link where it says trim size. We're going to check the compatible book sizes with minimum and maximum counts for each type of book, um, each type of book interior. You can see here that there's ink types and paper types like black ink on white paper or cream paper, standard color and premium color ink on white paper. There are two types of trim sizes, regular, and then there's large ones. We're going to look for our book size in the large trim sizes because children's books usually um, are large and for easy reading. Um, the most common size for children's books is 8.5 into 8.5 inches, and we're going to go with that too. Now we're going to decide whether we want bleed in our trim sizes. Bleed is basically a type of printing where the image covers the entire page and there are no white spaces around the image. As you can see here, how the images sit on the page with or without bleed. Children's books usually are drafted with bleed, so we're going to do, go with those settings. We'll just need to add 0.125 inches to the width of our book and 0.25 inches to the height of our book size. If you're feeling confused, there's a tab with trim sizes with bleed and without bleed here as well. So for instance, if our book size was 8.5 inches into 8.5 inches, um, our book size with bleed is going to be 8.625 inches into 8.75 inches. Before going on to step three, I want to introduce myself for all those new to my channel. I'm Sara, and I help you guys get creative and make the process of creating different kinds of digital products easy. If you'd like to watch similar content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so you don't miss the other parts of this video. Step three is going to be importing all these settings into Canva. If you don't have an account on Canva, it's really easy to sign up. It's a great place to start if you're a beginner with a lot of features, but I'm going to use a free version for this video because I know a lot of people who are going to watch me don't have the luxury to afford monthly subscriptions. And my goal is to help you guys become financially independent using middle to no investment. Okay, so click create a new design, change the parameters to inches, and then enter the measurements.
Now that your artboard is ready, we're going to go back to Amazon KDP's book formatting instructions. Here we can check what pages we need to add to our book before beginning to add our actual content. So our first page is going to be the half title page. Here we, are, we will just be adding the book title. I'm going to do that in the last. Right now I'm just holding the place for these pages. The next page is going to be black, blank as it's going to be the back of the half title page. You'll see that I did, I did that later. After that, we're going to add the full title with the author's name, um, then the copyrights page, then the dedications page, then the table of contents. Try to keep the sequencing of the pages keeping in mind that each page has two sides. So for instance, if I want a back of a page empty, I'm going to add a page after that page and keep it blank. So for instance, this table of contents page would be on the right side in the book and I want the back side of it empty. So I'm just adding a page after table of contents. Now comes the main part, creating the actual content of the book. I'm going to begin by creating a page that says section one at home as suggested by ChatGPT. In this section, we're going to add rooms like bedroom, kitchen, bathroom, etc. And then label things typically found in these spaces. For the first one, I'm going to do the kitchen. For that, I'm just simply typing kitchen background into the elements section of Canva. Now I'm going to select the graphics tab and pick this yellow plane with a window background to work with. Now you'll notice that this is in, the, in landscape while our artboard is square. So after adjusting the image to make it workable on the artboard, I decided to tweak it a little by myself, drawing the lines and adding shapes. This was a little tedious, but the end result was so worth it. For me, this also gave me some satisfaction of not using the graphic image as is. This is important from a legal copyright point of view. We need to use Canva elements in a way where it doesn't just seem like we're using it as it is. We need to make it more original by tweaking it or editing it. So that is what, so that's what I did. You can see that I turned this rectangular image into a square. This gave us more room to work with. And now we're just going to add this background to look for some kitchen elements. And for that, I'm just going to type in those keywords again into the search bar, search bar of Canva elements. After trying to adjust some kitchen counters and kitchen shelves, I found, that, found the one that I liked and I added that to the picture. Now I'm going to look for a nice dining table to add. Again, after looking for several elements, I found one I liked. I added some chairs. You can notice that I'm adjusting the placement of all these elements by layering them in front or back of other elements. Again, by adding each individual element separately to create your own, or your own unique image is what makes this great. You're not infringing any copyright policies this way, and you also have the liberty to play around. Just like you can see how I'm adding stuff to the table, like a vase, some bowls, some drinks, etc. You wouldn't know by looking at this whole image that was created, or should I say designed, by placing each element separately to create something unique. I've sped up this process for the sake of not making this video too long, but feel free to slow it down if you get stuck somewhere or comment below if you need any help. After I'm done with my image, I'm now going to label the things. You can label all of them or however many words you'd like. This is going to be a hundred words book. So if you have 10 words each page, you need 10 images or scenes. So do that accordingly.
for this video, I'm going to do one more scene, which is going to be the living room. I'm going to do exactly what I did for our previous setting in the kitchen. I'm going to search for a living room background and here I found one that I liked and just like the previously edited one, um, I'm going to adjust this image into a square background. I'm going to add in some square shapes, adjust the color and size and layer it behind our original image. Now I'm just adding some living room elements like a couch, a rug, some curtains and paintings, a clock, a lamp, a side table, a table lamp, basically just decorating the whole space. If you think you can do it all by yourself, feel free to just skip this part. I'm not going to cut it out because I've had several from my audience comment to me that they'd like to see the whole process so that that's what I've done. By the end of this video, you'd have made two whole rooms with objects and I'm sure you'll do a great job at, at it. After making these two spaces, there will be no, no one stopping you to make the other eight. After you're done making the pages, you can now edit the placeholders at the start. I told ChatGPT to help me come up with the name of the book. I also prompted it to give me content to add on the copyrights page. I mentioned that I used Canva, so it added that into the copyrights as well. I added dedications for my daughters. You can add whoever you like. Then I made the then I made the table of contents. After I was done, I also changed the fonts and the size of the text to make it more presentable. The fonts I used later were Canva Student and the text size I used for the label things was 18 while the big text was 32. After I was done recording this for you guys, I created a couple more pages and really just refined the existing ones. You can see it looks much better than when we started. The fonts are better, the things that, we have, uh, that have been labeled are placed nicely and evenly. This is super easy to do. Canva has so much to offer even in its free version. There's honestly no other platform for beginners and professionals alike like Canva. Easy to use and has a lot of options. So once we finish creating our book, we're going to save it as PDF. There are two options for it. Choose the one that's best for PDF printing. Download your file and you're good to go. Now we're going to make a book cover. 
If you would like to watch that video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss the next part of the series where I show you how to create the book cover. Till then, bye bye. See you in the next video.